we still don't understand um, the physiopathology behind OA entirely. And the treatment targets for OA are still undefined. And even more, you, we probably have different subgroups of OA, which we've not been able to categorize very well to date. Then on the other end, you have treatments that we still don't entirely understand. And they were kind of putting a mixed bag of, of things and, and, and delivering that to patients. So how do you conciliate um, the funding on both the treatment and the basic science of OA moving the ball forward? Because I see that there are two moving targets and we're trying to design studies to, to assess those two things that we still don't understand. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that is a great question. I don't have a great answer, but I can tell you that from the sponsor side, from the industry side, yeah, go on and, yeah. you know, the, the, they take a different view about who should be funding basic science studies. Their funding efforts at tens of millions or a hundred million dollars for a trial cash um, is focused on demonstrating efficacy in a narrowly defined group of patients. And that narrow definition of patients is predicated on inclusion exclusion criteria that are ultimately decided in conjunction with the FDA. You, you, I mean, you're completely right. The underlying pathophysiology is something that the Arthritis Foundation has funded for at least uh, 40 years when I was a fellow. And so I, I, I don't have an answer to that. I think so. I, I didn't mean to put you on the spot. I wanted to see your sense from the, you know, the kind of FDA sponsor side of things. I think clinically, Nicholas, yeah, it's challenging. We need to continue to characterize our patients, all the relevant factors. And George had that nice slide earlier with all the different factors, age, comorbidity, sex, gender, you know, a number of other factors that do the best we can to, again, phenotype our patients. And OA is probably a great example of what we call arthritis, as you know, is about 30 different diseases, right? So that's the challenge. Thank you.